Hello, welcome to the section of Mastering Statistics. Here we're going to discuss the extremely central, important topic of standard deviation. Many, many, many of you uh, probably have heard the term standard deviation. A lot of times, you know, if you're in a class or uh, in college or something, or even in high school maybe, uh, your professor might tell you, okay, the grades in the class um, where the mean was uh, 75 or a mean was a, the mean was 80 and the standard deviation was 10 points, right? And many of you have heard that but don't even really know what, the, what standard deviation of 10 points means. We're going to clear that up here. Much like the mean and the variance were extremely important central topics that you'll just see over and over again, the standard deviation is even more common than the variance when using and really describing sets of data. And again, the purpose of it is to measure the spread of the data. So let's walk down this logic and I'll explain how easy standard deviation is to understand. But as we talk about it, just think to yourself, okay, we're just trying to describe the spread of the data. So that's what we're doing. Now recall, I will say, recall, uh, we've already learned the sample variance. The sample variance. And that I will change colors for. And that was denoted S squared is the sum of the data points minus the average value squared over n minus 1. We've done that before. We understand that. Great. Now recall also the population. There's a reason I'm writing all this down again, so just kind of bear with me. The population variance, I'll go ahead and just rewrite that again. We called it sigma squared, and it was the sum of all of the data points minus the population mean, that's what that is, everything squared, just like before, and instead of n minus 1, it was n, the total number of people or items in the population. This is what we've learned before. These do measure the spread of the data. They do. Um, but the problem, if you want to call it a problem, is that because we squared everything, it does measure in a relative sense how spread the data is. You can look at two variances of two different data sets and figure out which one's more spread by looking at which one's larger. But the problem is we've squared all of our data points. So because we've squared it, uh, all the differences, we've squared everything. So when we get a variance of 10.9, or if we get a variance of 5, what does that mean? It, because everything's been squared, it's not in the units of our original data points anymore. In other words, if I calculate the variance of the grades in a classroom, like I, I may have some students in a class and the average value or the mean of everybody's grade might be an 80, right? And I might calculate the variance of all that data to try to figure out how spread apart everybody is about the mean. And let's say I cal calculate the variance that ends up being 15, right? If I calculate the variance of 15, is that 15 points, like 15 test points? No, it isn't because I subtracted everything from the mean, but then I squared it. So that's kind of why everything is labeled out here with a square. It's reminding you that, that the calculation you did does represent how spread the data is, but I've squared everything, and so I can't really say that the, when I say the variance of 10, point, uh, uh, variance of 10 in turn, talking about the grades, that it's 10 points variance plus or minus the mean because everything has been squared. So what we're going to do is fix that little problem right now, and I'm going to go off to the other board and write that down. So what we do is we have the sample standard 